What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another rebuild today. Rebuilding the Atlanta Falcons who notably passed on a quarterback with Justin Fields available. Whether that's a good decision, we'll find out. And maybe even over this rebuild as we are focused around a different player. Kyle Pitts, the versatile weapon. So it feels like a good a time as any to plug the versatile weapon merch. This is the blueprint design you can choose number of different colors and check out a number of different things. Maybe not that color for this, but uh, yeah, you guys asked for the versatile weapon merch, brought it out maybe about six months ago, something like that. Uh, I'm in love with the design. I think it's absolutely awesome. If you do as well, link is in the description of Teespring. Could also be on the side here, but you can uh, check that out if you'd like. I'll also mention that I tweeted out. I said, who should I rebuild next? I gave the two options, Falcons and Raiders. And you guys, overwhelmingly, in the last 15 minutes, have voted for the Falcons. That's why I'm doing this. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Bengal YouTube. We're talking football all the time over here. Gave the super hot take that Joey Bosa's better than Nick Bosa, which I don't know why that's even a conversation at this moment. Nick Bosa had a really solid rookie year. Joey Bosa's just been the better player. Nick Bosa's played one year in the league. That's not what this is about, but we talk football all the time on Twitter. So at Bengal YouTube, twitter.com slash Bengal YouTube. Link is in the description. You can help pick rebuilds. You can help decide things for franchises and talk football, get into debates. And uh, I will talk down to you because apparently I'm an egotistical maniac, right? No, um, I feel like it's important to have a conversation, but I'm not shy about my opinion, clearly. So we actually find ourselves in an interesting situation at quarterback with Matt Ryan. He's 36 years old and I can tell you, He's just not going to be viable for this rebuild. He's just not going to be. It kind of is what it is. If you can see his contract here, he is under contract for the next three years. And he gets really, 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 really expensive. This is not a realistic rebuild like I've been doing recently. Did the Bears realistic rebuild, or I did the Broncos, excuse me. And I did the 49ers realistic rebuild. I will get to the Falcons down the line and do a realistic rebuild for them probably in a month or two. So be sure to subscribe for that if you're not already. But I'm trading Matt Ryan. Gonna trade him. He's got decent value and I should be able to get some good stuff in return for him. Quarterbacks are really highly valued. So even though he's old, he plays the most important position in the game. So Matt Ryan will be traded. Just has to happen for the future of this franchise. Receiver's tough. Calvin Ridley's a beast. The team obviously traded Julio Jones. We cannot do a Falcons rebuild without mentioning that the best player for the Falcons over the past decade is now gone. Is Julio Jones the best player in Falcons history? I think yes. I think yes. Is he the best overall player to ever play for the Falcons? No. I think you'd put Deion Sanders there, even though, you know, he moved around teams a lot. Played for the Niners, played for the Cowboys in his prime as well, and ended up on the Ravens. Washington for a time but yeah I think the best player in Falcons history is Julio Matt Ryan's probably in that conversation as well won an MVP maybe it's Matt Ryan maybe it's Matty Ice it probably is honestly with an MVP but Julio has been great it's just Matt Ryan other than his MVP season was really never one of the like top two or three in the league ah, he was real close though yeah it's probably Matt Ryan Julio though was the best receiver in the NFL for a time, or one and two with Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins. But yeah, regardless, we've got Calvin Ridley. He's also awesome. Amazing route runner. Is just developing really, really well. Was kind of an older rookie, so I think he was kind of like looked down on a little bit in the draft. Ended up being a first round pick. I think he went at like number 20, I want to say like 24th. It's that's not going to be it, but it's close 26th in 2018. But yeah, he's a good player just because he's an older rookie. He's still, you know, really good. The only thing of why those players are undervalued or valued less, I should say, is because they're older than their competition. So yeah, a 23 year old playing, you know, college football should be better than the 18, 19, and 20 year olds that they're going to be routinely going up against. I know he's like 22 or whatever, but yeah. Uh, you get the point. Offensive line is pretty good. I always struggle with what to do with Jake Matthews just because he's almost 30. He's pretty good, but not great. But I think we're going to keep him for this one. Josh Andrews, I'll be honest, I can pretty much tell you every starter in the NFL and a lot of the backups. 
I don't know who Josh Andrews is. I know Drew Dahlman, rookie center out of Stanford. Don't know Josh Andrews. Matt Hennessy, Chris Lindstrom, Caleb McGarry, former first round pick along with Chris Lindstrom as well. And even uh, Jalen Mayfield here out of Michigan, another rookie. He was one of the top picks for the Falcons. I think he was a third or fourth rounder. But Jalen Mayfield was someone that a lot of guys really liked. He just had a tendency at Michigan to get beat by speed rushers. I remember watching that, or when I was watching him at Michigan, that was the big thing that stood out. But it's a pretty good run blocker. That's why a lot of guys, including myself, thought that he would probably end up making a transition to guard. So maybe I actually do that. Maybe I move Jalen Mayfield to left guard, start him right away. It's not the best. We're probably going to end up improving on that. But let's move Jalen Mayfield to left guard. The arm length is another thing as well that makes you think about a guy playing guard rather than tackle. Kyle Pitts, the versatile weapon, clearly an animal. Like, he's ridiculously good. Almost more of a receiver at tight end than an actual tight end, but he's also got the size. Even though his run blocking rating is not that great, I found that Kyle Pitts is a pretty willing run blocker. Like, he's going to get after it in line, so... You're going to have a complete player. There's a reason he was the highest drafted tight end of all time, right? Just an unbelievable prospect. Polished route runner, great hands. Kyle Pitts is the complete package. Excellent after the catch as well. Hayden Hurst, probably not going to feature too much. Might trade him. And we got to do better than Russell Gage. Got to do better than Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson. And Deontay Foreman, hook him horns though. And Kadri Allison. Josh Rosen is on the Falcons now. That's interesting. And then defensively, it's pretty bad. We've got Deron Harmon. I'm going to start Richie Grant right away. Really liked him at UCF. Dante Fowler Jr., we got to do better than him. Foyasadi Aluakun, love him. Love Deion Jones. Great combo up the middle. Got to do better than Brandon Copeland. It's not the best linebacker crew in the world. I, world. I like Michael Walker a lot, but he doesn't fit the 3-4 at all. So if we had Marlon Davidson, who I love, and Grady Jarrett, who's awesome, if we have them up the middle, and then who do we have then at, like as an actual edge rusher? There's really nothing. Taquan Graham, another Texas legend. Man, they have a lot of Texas players on this team. I've counted, uh, well, at least two. But I guess we'll probably stay in the 3-4 for this year. I want Michael Walker to play. Now I'm changing it. I, I don't care. I'm the coach now. I'm the GM. I make the calls. I wouldn't actually hate leaving Marlon Davidson at right end in a 4-3 for year one. Fun fact about him is he actually played the edge at Auburn because Derek Brown was in there and they basically um, operated kind of like a multiple front where Derek Brown is playing nose tackle a lot. And Marlon Davidson would rush off the edge, even though he was far more suited for the defensive interior. So long term, I probably like Marlon Davidson at D tackle over Tyler Davison. But right now, I feel like we can leave him there. I might not, but we can. Okay, so I set up the defense. This is how it's going to look. Got to improve a corner. Thankfully, some of these draft classes are loaded at corner. AJ Terrell played really well his rookie year. Like, we got some good athletes here. Isaiah Oliver, I feel like, has been fairly disappointing. Kendall Sheffield has been struggling to stay healthy. I know he didn't really play a whole lot his rookie year. So now, uh, going into year three, we'll have to see how healthy he can stay, how much he can develop. And then Fabian Moreau, we just have to do better than him at corner. I know I keep saying that for so many of these different guys, but we do have to do better. That's the point of the rebuild. Get better players in there. You know, I might even start Kaminsky over Copeland just because he's younger. So let's do that. And then specialist-wise, the rush players are going to be Grady Jarrett and Marlon Davidson. Let me just regenerate this and have that change. Oh, it's not going to. Uh, okay. And, you know, I actually had an interesting thought. What do you think about this? Maybe I keep Hayden Hurst. And due to the lack of actual talented receivers on the team outside of Calvin Ridley, no disrespect to Russell Gage, although I was disrespectful just there, Kyle Pitts is going to be my slot receiver, and Hayden Hurst can stick as our main tight end. I actually like that a lot. I'm going to simulate... Oh, do I trade Matt Ryan? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Listen, I'll have another rebuild with the Falcons where I let Matt Ryan uh, use all of our salary cap and regress to nothing and just 
let him retire a Falcon. Uh, actually, he probably won't. His contract will expire and be like, I can still play. And someone's like, you can definitely still play. And then he sucks as he's a 40-year-old quarterback. But in this rebuild, fantasy style, I'm trading him. I'm also trading my first round pick next year and Dante Fowler Jr. He's a 74 overall left end, which is higher than what he was at outside linebacker. And he's getting paid still way too much. So he's getting traded as well. I'm clearing a lot of cap by doing this. We'll take on some penalty as well, but we definitely clear way more than counts negatively against us for this season. Uh, and we are getting... Number three overall projected from the Lions, although they might be a little bit better now. And I'm getting the Rams first round pick next year from the Lions. So we clear a lot of cap space by doing that for right now. It's going to help us out significantly long term. And I'm just committing to the tank. You can't be half in and a little bit out. You got to choose. Are you all in or are you all out? And we're all out for this year and we're not going all out. A lot going on there, but Josh Rosen's our starting quarterback, and I guess John Kaminsky's going to start two and four at the midseason mark. Not actually all that bad. Who are the expiring contracts? That's going to be big for us. Young Way Koo, Deron Harmon, Josh Rosen, of course. Man, Josh Rosen and AJ McCarron. What a combo. Deron Harmon's 30. No. You know, there are some actually, like, hard decisions in here. Russell Gage, Isaiah Oliver, Fabian Morel, I'm going to let go. But Hayden Hurst, I talked about him playing an impact, but I don't really want to sign him past, like, two years. Maybe I would do three at the most. Like, that's not the worst. Is he worth it? We have the money for the next three years. Like, I don't know where, that we're going to be able to keep him. For Yasadi Aluakun, I absolutely want to keep. He's kind of expensive because we're paying him as an outside linebacker, but I do want him, so I'm fine to do that. Aluakun is back. Young Wei Koo, I want back. Deron Harmon, again, at 30 years old. Just really no interest in that. And Russell Gage might be a part of a sign-in trade type deal. So I'll offer him a four-year contract. He'll re-sign, and I don't know that he's going to be on the team that long. And then Isaiah Oliver returns as well. Yeah, it's going to be Fabian Moreau walking, Hayden Hurst probably walking, and then Young Wei Koo I'll re-sign in the offseason, like in free agency, not in the re-signed players, just so I can get them for cheaper. Playoff time. I'm going to say we're probably not going to be a part of them. It's my crazy guess on that. We'll see. It's taking its sweet time. We went 8-9. and nine. Way better than I thought we would go, which actually I would say is encouraging long term. I would say that's fairly encouraging. Near 500 for a team that's definitely not that good is pretty good. Josh Rosen had a great year. I mean, we were better, I think, than our actual numbers show with our record. I don't think we were as good as the record would indicate. Josh Rosen was great. Like, he really was great. If he gets star dev, we might have something there. At least as a trade piece. We had no running game at all. Calvin Ridley was really good. Kyle Pitts went for over 1,000 yards and 6 TDs. Look at even, even Hayden Hurst was awesome as a second tight end, but keep in mind he was a tight end when Kyle Pitts was in the slot. So that, that's pretty interesting. Calvin Ridley, great year. And then defensively, Deion Jones had 117 tackles, 4 for loss, 3.5 sacks and 3 picks. Great year. John Kaminsky, 18 tackles for loss and 11.5 sacks. 8.5 for Grady Jarrett. Copeland had 5. What a year for John Kaminsky. I mean, you might be looking at a star development player after that. Maybe. Maybe. Interceptions, three for Deion Jones led the way. A lot of other players had one. 2021 season recap. It's going to be tough to compete with the Bucks. They're really solid. And these are interesting things we're looking at. Patriots won a Super Bowl. No Tom Brady. Still get it done. Dak wins MVP. Urban Meyer wins Coach of the Year. With the Jaguars, Dak wins Offensive Player of the Year. Khalil Mack wins Defensive Player of the Year. Najee with the Offensive Rookie of the Year. And Zayvon Collins, who seems to win it a lot in these rebuilds, wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. We don't have a ton of money just because we're taking some of the penalty. But overall, it's going to clear up really nicely. But we're still paying Grady Jarrett a lot. 
that's going to get reworked and that's going to be cheaper. Still paying Jake Matthews a lot. At some point, that's going to get reworked. It's going to get cheaper. Paying Fuyasadi Aluakun way too much money. I know I just gave him that, but way too much money. Just is what it is. Bit the bullet on that one. That's a bad contract I gave out. But we're paying him like he's an edge rusher and he's not. Yeah, I mean, that is what it is. Deion Jones should get cheaper. Calvin Ridley, we have to pay. Oh, I can't believe this for you, Sadio Luluku in contract. Kyle Pitts, we're going to have to re-sign at some point. Russell Gage probably will be traded. But a lot of these guys are coming off the books. Davison's going to be gone. Caleb McGarry. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't even know if we bring him back. Mike Davis is going to be gone. Hayden Hurst is 29 now. We just have to make the tough decisions and say, all these guys are going to walk, maybe negotiate with Hayden Hurst in free agency, although probably not. And Young Way Koo, I want back 100%. As I'm seeing who our backup kicker is, it's certainly imperative that we bring back Young Way Koo. I'll tell you, I, I don't want to be saying that one at all. <laughs> I'll be honest. I want to steer well clear of our current kicker. So we got to bring back Young Way Koo. Marcus Williams rejected my offer. Really thought we were going to improve the secondary. Yes, we're going to have to focus on that during the draft. Are there any other good DBs still available? Could bring back Demonte Casey. I don't want to do that at all. NFL draft time. We're going to pick it like, we're, I don't even know where the Lions are. Number three overall. And our pick is going to be more like what? 14? Something like that? 14. Hey, there we go. Quarterback Glenn Edwards. Definitely got a cannon on him. Not really much of a runner. Noah Williams ran 449. Also appears to have a cannon. Don't really know much about his accuracy. We have four early first round running backs. Four of them. Five of them. All of these guys are early first rounders. So five out of the top 10 players in the draft are running backs. So as we're blinded by the light here, hopefully getting fixed in early September. Uh, I wish I had my sunglasses. Uh, I'm not going down to the car for the joke, though. Um, <laughs> I don't like the draft class. I really don't. The whole running backs thing is really throwing me off. Get that out of here. Um, I'm going to trade down from three. I don't know what happens after that. Okay, I'm doing a swap here. Doing a swap. 3 and 14 for 9 and projected 10. Moving down to 9 is absolutely the best move for me if I want to take that quarterback. And then trading number 14. Again, it's just not a really good draft class. So not eager to take that pick. I'll take the Jets first rounder next year. Hopefully the Jets suck. At number 9 has to be Noah Williams. No other guys getting it done. LSU quarterback. The last one taken was Joe Burrow. Before that, high in the draft. I don't really want to talk about it. But uh, let's just say that between re rebuilding the Falcons and another option, the other option may have taken one, and he was not great. Is a really, really generous way of putting it. But yeah, Noah Williams, I'm rambling a bit. We're going to take him, ran sub 4-5. It's ridiculous. He's ranked number 11. We knew he was a mid-first-round guy, so we knew he wasn't going to be top 10. The big thing that sucks with him is normal development 76 overall is great normal dev just kind of sucks however as he has 90 speed holy the big thing with him is we're gonna get him up to star and beyond so it's not really too big of an issue but right now he's gonna develop a little bit slower than we'd like but 76 overall is a really really good starting point so now the question becomes do we move up for a running back max levy looks pretty good Nigel Proctor. Am I really going to draft a player named Nigel? Dewan Yarbrough. It's quite a name as well. <laughs> Jalen Crutchfield. I can't draft a player named Crutchfield. He's going to get injured every year. He's never going to play. Adonis Oglesby is maybe one of the best names I've ever seen. But Max Levy definitely looks like the best player here. I accidentally simulated my pick. I tried to skip to the next pick. Not next user pick and i totally missed out on him thankfully julius newhouse is available he's a mid first round guy that's supposed to go in the fifth 
So we can take him in the third, fourth if I want to and be pretty happy about that. But unfortunately, and not that I was going to trade back up in, into the first round for a running back, but I would have liked the option to at least think about it. But yeah, this draft like, kind of sucks. Trading a two, a four, and a five for a projected end of the first round pick from Minnesota next year. I hope they're way worse than that. But again, it's just not a great draft class, at least for my needs. I'm sure I'm going to go into the draft recap and see five running backs that are all near 80 overall. It's going to be like, well, it couldn't have been that bad. Dante Jackson was a player I would have considered at this pick. He goes one pick before. Really cool. Projected to go around three. But again, not a great draft class. So I think I'm going to trade down this pick as well. Oh, trade down, trade down, trade down. It's what I'm doing, okay? Trading a two this year, number 59. A three and a four next year. We have two fours next year, though. So we're only parting with one of them. And we're getting another back end of the first round pick from Pittsburgh. Again, we're gambling that... They're just not going to be as good as projected. Now in round three, this is where I take the shot on the running back. Julius Newhouse out of Baylor. Welcome to the team. 75 overall, number 12 in the class, star or better development. Not mad about that. Decent enough speed at 90. Good carrying, trucking. Agility is pretty good. Like pretty much 80s across the board for everything except for break tackle and catching. Catching... Almost at a 70. It's 69. Nice. Break tackle. Almost to an 80. Julius Newhouse looks actually really good. And if Deacon Freeman, which by the way is the most Deacon slash like priest slash like minister slash reverend name I've heard in my entire life. If Deacon Freeman is available at round six, pick 14, I am taking him 100%. He probably will not be available. Yeah, sad. We'll take Frank Alford. What are the odds of having two receivers named Frank on the same team in 2021? Not a super common name, especially at the receiver position. Frank Alford and yes, Frank Darby. Also, Robert Alford was a Falcon for some time. Maybe a distant relative with this created player. Let's see this draft recap with like 10 running backs near the top of the draft. That's what it's going to be. We already know that. What are their overalls? 80 for Nigel Proctor, who I would not have taken. Yeah, he looks really good. 95 speeds more than I thought he would get. Joe Ward or Jose. Ah, well, yeah, he's Joe. Normal dev for, for Joe Ward. <laughs> Max Levy went at number 28. 78 overall. Hmm. Like, he's definitely more elusive with change of direction and agility than the running back we took. Doesn't have the trucking. He's not quite as well-rounded. Catching is awesome, but he's playing up. Catching's plus five, randomly. What is his dev trait? That's going to be the, the big thing. If it's star, I'm not going to be that upset. It's star. Who cares? It's a plus, you know, what, plus three overall to the guy we got? Was he 78? Yeah, 78. We got 75. And arguably, I mean, maybe we have a better development trait. Could happen. Could happen with Julius Newhouse. And uh, Noah Williams, normal dev. We know that, but not too mad. It wasn't like a super bad draft class. It just wasn't really like that great for me. I was never going to take Richard Carruthers. He has 88 power moves. Oh my God. That's a lot. Like, we could have been very happy with taking him, I think. <laughs> 88 power moves is a lot. Only a star, Dev. I'm comfortable with my draft. The big thing, I guess, is what is Glenn Edwards' development trait? Also, yeah, stupid the Bengals are taking a quarterback. That was supposed to be fixed, and it's not at all. Glenn Edwards is a lower overall than the quarterback we chose, but he has at least star development. For being the quarterback taking number one overall, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Superstar Plus easily. And it's only Star. Not mad about it. And now I'm not surprised by this. I already knew this. But Kyle Pitts, Superstar X Factor. Yeah, he's pretty good. Ooh, John Kaminsky, by the way, did get Star Development. I don't know if he's our long-term guy, but it's nice for right now. He's going to be a little bit better. Jalen Hawkins at starting strong safety. Man, we did not get all that much better in the offseason. We got our new franchise QB and running back potentially, but that's kind of it. 
This could be a rough season too. Three and four at the midseason mark. Not particularly great. We will be able to find out our running back dev trait probably. And it is Superstar. We automatically win. I'm glad I accidentally simulated. Julius Newhouse. Aggressive catch trait. Fights for yards. Interesting. He's a team player. That's what we need more of. Not some of these guys that are like, yeah, can I have more money, please? They don't phrase it nearly as nice as that. Julius Newhouse, clearly, clearly the right choice. Superstar Dev, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Grady Jarrett, Calvin Ridley, Chris Lindstrom, three pretty big free agents. John Kaminsky's in here, and he's like good for me for some reason. Brought back Calvin Ridley and Grady Jarrett. Two superstar dev players. Certainly necessary. Chris Lindstrom as well. Like, he's going to end up being one of the better guards in the league. So, got to bring back Chris Lindstrom. Playoff time. We are 8-9. Wow. Talk about consistency. This is the Jeff Fisher rebuild. He would go 8-9 every year in a 17-game schedule. Patrick Mahomes, shockingly, very good again. Calvin Ridley also, by the way, very, very good. He's going to get to Superstar X Factor 100%. What a year from Noah Williams, by the way. Noah Williams sets the record for rookie passing yards by a lot. Over 5K. Also breaks the Herbert record of 31 with 33 now, albeit with another game. Actually, did Herbert even play 16 last year? He definitely didn't. No. Nope. Was he like, was it week two he came in? Because Tyrod Taylor got attacked by the doctor. The team doctor stabbed him in like the lung. <laughs> yeah, week two. 15 games, 15 starts. Rushing, Justin Newhouse sucked. 3.4 yards per carry. Did have nine touchdowns. But if he gets good, wow, look out. 91 speed he's up to. Yeah, Calvin Ridley was nuts. Wow, really good. 1,700 plus yards for Calvin Ridley on over 100 catches. 16 TDs. Kyle Pitts, 1,100 yards, seven touchdowns. Russell Gage was actually pretty good as well. Julius Newhouse impacted the game as a receiver too, which is cool. Defensively, Deion Jones, 144 tackles. We have two double-digit sack guys as well. Grady Jarrett's one of them. He also had 20 tackles for loss, 10 and a half sacks. 10 for John Kaminsky, not much going on. Outside of that, Isaiah Oliver, three picks. Deion Jones with two. So... The fact that we're able to go 8-9 with a bad team, imagine when we're good like next year and two years from now. We have a lot of picks. We have a lot of picks. So we're going to cash in big time. Available salary cap, by the way, a lot. Over 70 mil. The 2022 season recap. Okay, interesting. The Bengals and their new quarterback made the Super Bowl. Panthers won it. Jeremy Chin was the Super Bowl MVP. That's unusual. Our QB won Rookie of the Year. Noah Williams, let's go. Brian Wilbur, linebacker for the Lions, won Defensive Rookie of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. And Zeke won Offensive Player of the Year and MVP. Mike McCarthy's head coach of the Bengals now. He's getting around. Packers head coach for a while. And then now Cowboys and Bengals in the span of like two seasons. I almost traded Kendall Sheffield last... Oh, my God. Caleb McGarry's 28. Dude. Be younger. <laughs> Let me give you a chance. I can't. Can't do it. Kaminsky's 27 now. Ooh. I'm going to bring him back. I'm going to bring back John Kaminsky. It's reasonable. He's back for two. 70 mil. Let's fix this team. Quentin Nelson. Yes. Ooh. Tyreek Hill. Also, yes. Calvin Ridley did get Superstar X Factor. A receiving core of Calvin Ridley, Tyreek Hill, and Kyle Pitts. I would say is like borderline undefendable. You have, I mean, <laughs> it's so funny. It's basically what the Chiefs have already with Kyle Pitts. Travis Kelsey is, you know, such a great receiving weapon of a tight end. Even though he's not quite the athlete Kyle Pitts is, still a pretty good athlete. Tyreek Hill is already on the Chiefs. And then you have, you know, Nicole Hardman, who's fast as hell as well. But Calvin Ridley is going to beat you with his unbelievable route running. Tyreek Hill will beat you by being way faster. 
And now Kyle Pitts is basically Travis Kelsey. I'm doing it. Also, can you imagine Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill on the same team? We would abuse other teams. And probably that's not all. I'm just not going to match Quentin Nelson's contract. There's no way. There's no way. Like, I could pay him a little bit more. But he's getting such a huge contract from the Chargers. Go protect Justin Herbert. We'll do our own thing. Grady Jarrett, also up to Superstar X Factor. That's huge. Also trying to steal Zadarius Smith for a couple seasons. That would be really nice. Wow. Not ideal. Obviously didn't get Quentin Nelson. I thought we'd get Jamel Dean. That would have been a nice addition to our secondary. We did get Tyreek Hill on a monster contract, but that makes our offense so good. So good. The Patriots are probably going to end up getting Zadarius Smith. I don't really feel like changing that. We also did not get Zedarius Smith. Not really a huge shock. We don't need to spend all our money at once, though. I think getting Tyreek Hill is big enough. NFL draft time. Let's kick it off big. We have a lot of picks, including the number one overall pick. So we pick at 1-4, 24, and 25. So I think the, the picks that we gambled on, Steelers in Minnesota, just ended up being back end of the first round or close to it anyways. But we're obviously not going to take a quarterback. We have our quarterback, even though oh, I'm sure they're pretty good. We could take a QB, just go full-on Cardinals. But if our QB has star dev, it's not going to happen. And he probably does have star dev now. I'm going to check for any other development trade upgrades. Yeah, he's at star dev. We're not taking a quarterback. Noah Williams is is great, clearly. And Fuyasadi Aluakun goes up to superstar dev. Maybe earning some of that contract. Nice to see. Two six safeties. This one five nine two twenty. Thick boy. Four three one forty. Juan Pierce at Stanford also. Incredible athlete. I want both. I'll take two, please. Corners are kind of whatever. Adrian Wilburn, pretty decent. Also, here's Vince Howard. I don't know if you guys remember Vince Howard, aka Michael B. Jordan on Friday Night Lights, the best football TV show of all time. Vince Howard from East Dillon, a.k.a. Michael B. Jordan, a.k.a. Killmonger from uh, Black Panther, who died. Spoiler if you haven't seen that movie, but at the end he dies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil it. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know why I just did that. Demarcus Monk. He's really not much of an athlete. He's a 3-4 end, but I, I like it. Kendrick Weston, kind of the same deal. Mike Rudolph, though, is an actual pass rusher. Looks decent. I don't know. It's a really interesting class. Again, I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit disappointed. Early first round receiver in the second. I feel like all the talent in this draft is in the second round. So I don't want picks near the top. I want them near the back end of the first where we can actually get these guys and get them for great value. Look at you, Joshua Winston. Skip the combines to Roger Goodell. I'm not doing your damn combine. Skips it. Looks like a beast. I mean, how do you not want both of those receivers? Maybe because of where our picks are. I take Joshua Winston in the second and miss out on Demarcus Ferguson, who already isn't super fast. Not super mad about that. More of an agile guy, really. Don't really need a running back, but a good backup wouldn't be the worst to split carries at the very least. But, you know, we're going to move down. We're going to move down a lot. Demarcus Monk, I like the look of at D-Tackle. And then I don't really like a player until Brian Matias, who just looks like a nose tackle. So if I take one player, I wouldn't take the other. And then those two safeties, of course, another corner. I don't really know exactly what to do here. How about that? Making kind of a big move here. Nothing special. But the number one overall pick, a fifth and a fifth next year. For Miles Garrett, we needed help on the edge. We needed a big-time pass rusher. And I think we did that with the number one overall pick. We got a huge pass rusher, arguably the best in the NFL right now. And the Browns have the number one overall pick. Now, would they do that in real life? Certainly not. Getting the number one overall pick doesn't mean anything for them because they'd be you know, using that to draft a Miles Garrett-type player. But now with Grady Jarrett and Miles Garrett, Garrett and Jarrett, Sounds like a buddy cop show. 
we're going to be unbelievable. We're going to be unbelievable. And at number four overall, what do I want to do? For some reason, I just want to take Demarcus Monk. I think it's the A minuses across the board. Like it's intriguing. Again, he'd play D tackle, but I have Marlon Davidson. I have Grady Jarrett. I don't really need him. I actually love this trade offer from the Raiders. It's going to be a three this or a three next year, a one next year, and number twenty six overall. I want picks near the back end of the first round. This works out perfectly. We get an extra first round pick. We're trading down a ton. Don't get me wrong, but. I think it's well worth it considering the talent in this draft and where, you know, they actually are in the draft class. Clay Allen, don't really need to take him. Demarcus Ferguson we talked about, but I think taking the two safeties, right, and maybe even the corner as well, Adrian Wilburn, we could completely revamp our secondary just like that. Now, we would still need something to play right tackle. Still need somebody to do that, not something but we need something at right tackle. Don't really want to take a D tackle at all. Steven Norton, didn't really look at him. But I know for a fact, I want both safeties, whether I get the other corner or not. Juan Pierce is number one. Again, it like, looks crazy, crazy combine. Hybrid archetype. So I'm thinking potential slot corner as well. So I could do that. He's a number two player in the draft. Only normal development. It's unusual to draft so many normal guys, but I'm I'm really doing a great job of it in this rebuild so far. I guess it's really been two players, but two out of three is a little strange. 93 speed, 95 acceleration is wild. 72 zone, 73 man, 81 hit power. Yeah, slot corner makes some sense to me, especially with this type of athletic profile. It could happen, could happen. Do I take Adrian Wilburn? I'm, I don't know about this one. Like, he's definitely good. I know that. I think I'm just going to be boring. I think I'm going to go O-line. DeAndre Sims, we need somebody to play right guard or right tackle. 6'4", 3'11", might shift him outside. 74 overall, star development or better. He's probably going to play right tackle. Really not much of a pass blocker, huh? 66 pass block. That's significantly lower than you'd like it to be. <laughs> Maybe he stays at guard. Uh, that's pretty bad. But he does have star development. So, yes, that's very nice. And then Marion Milner, want him as well. 4 3 140 is just ridiculous. So, we're going to take him. He's the number three overall player in the draft. Star, better development. He has 94 speed. You'd think it'd be a little bit higher running 4 3 1, but okay. 75 zone coverage, 79 hit power, 75 man. He's really, really interesting as a player. Not sure what we're going to do with these guys yet, but. Definitely a good pick. Really happy with that one. Middle of the second round. Now, this is where I'm looking to target that receiver we talked about a little bit earlier. Joshua Winston. Oscar Davey, I don't really care if we miss him, but if he's not available in the fourth, whatever, we'll take Jermaine Fitzsimmons to maybe play right tackle, depending on his development trait. It's probably going to be normal. He's not anything special. He's a late second round player. Like, he's not that good. Joshua Winston out of Miami is the one. He's going to complete our receiving core. Tyreek Hill. Russell Gage is going to be gone, so we'll have also Calvin Ridley. And then Joshua Winston, 77 overall, already higher than Russell Gage, I believe. Or maybe they're the same. He's 21, though. Star better development. Wow, 97 speed. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. 97 speed. That would equate to about like a 4 2 6 40. Pretty good. 93 acceleration. Deep route running is already an 82. 84 catching and spectacular catch. 95 agility and change of direction. Oh my god. Joshua Winston is ridiculous. That might be one of the more uh, favorite players I've ever drafted. Jermaine Fitzsimmons is available. We'll take him. Wow. He does have star dev. It's probably not going to be superstar. Let's be real about that. 6'8", 327. A late second round guy with star dev is unusual. Man, I'm just going to start him at right tackle. 88 strength. He actually can run block and pass block. Yeah, he's on 6'8", 330. Good lord. Try moving that. Running back Sean Skandrick. Cowboys love their first round running backs. Only normal development. They changed something. I feel like there's a lot more normal dev players now. Adrian Wilburn, who we passed on. 
I guess we had a good feeling about it. Only normal dev. Wow, his zone coverage is pitiful. Interesting thing, Adrian Wilson was a great safety for the Cardinals. Now they have Adrian Wilburn. Yeah, not really. I mean, it's not a bad draft class, clearly. Was Demarcus Monk star dev? Ooh, he was. If he's superstar, I'm going to be sad. Could be superstar X Factor in a random or random crazy world. Star dev. Not mad about it. Again, he wouldn't have really had a place to play anyway. So Jalen Mayfield's playing up to a 74 overall. We just drafted his replacement, and he's way better. I think I'm going to keep Juan Pierce at safety. He just looks more like a safety. And Milner, Marion Milner, 5'9", first of all, 220. What a build. <laughs> He's built like a little bowling ball, really. Crazy fast, good zone, and man, maybe slightly worse of a tackler. Marion Milner is going to play corner. He might be the second highest rated corner on the team. He's a 78. I don't know what to do with Russell Gage. That's my that's my predicament right now. I got to trade him, right? But for what? For what? I need a backup tight end. Need a backup running back. Aaron Rodgers just sitting here in free agency. He's not getting the call 89 overall or is he just weighing his options? It's another actual 2021 offseason. Tony Pollard just sitting here. Welcome to the team. Oh, yeah. Give me Gronk. Give me 34-year-old Gronk. I keep seeing this. I, I keep seeing this guy. Um, we're just going to avoid catastrophe and stick with one kicker. Oh, and I'm making sure Joshua Winston's going off in year one. I'm making sure of it. I'm making sure of it, putting him in the slot. He'll have a really good year. Our team should be pretty good. I mean, we're getting up there, 83 overall. Also, uh, I, I usually wouldn't like ever mention anything like this because like I get that we all know like my personality in the videos, the dry humor, the jokes, all that. If you know you think it's funny, um, that word I was alluding to not in my vocabulary. I do have to mention that since I'm the same color as a piece of paper. Some people think by default that I'm just out here just yelling it. Oh, the only thing I'll yell is like cracker or honky. I'll, I'll scream one of those at those white athletes. Um, <laughs> what am I talking about? We're 6-0. Let's talk about that. We're playing really well. But there are some people in the comments. The reason why I say it, they'll be like, oh, you, you only, it wouldn't, it wouldn't even be a problem. You wouldn't even think of that. That's just another last name. Uh, the only reason that could accidentally slip out is if it's in your common vocabulary. It's like, that's the whole joke. Clearly, I don't say that. But we're 6-0. Do you find anything like this on any other channel in this community? I hope not. But uh, yeah, with some decent free agents in here. Marlon Davidson, Matt Hennessy. Speaking of Hennessy... Uh, Jake Matthews, AJ Terrell, Deion Jones, some good free agents in here. Probably not going to negotiate with Michael Walker just yet. Brought back Marlon Davidson, Matt Hennessy, and Jake Matthews, and AJ Terrell. Deion Jones wants more money. Not a team player. Not a team player. 14 and 3. We didn't exactly carry out our unbelievable year starting out undefeated, but a very, very good year nonetheless. Way overperforming. And Noah Williams. Although the touchdowns weren't fully there, he threw for some yards. About 5,700 of them. Second best offense in the league. 36 TDs to 10 picks. I mean, he threw for a lot of yards. He's going to go up to superstar dev 100%. Rushing, Julius Newhouse went for over 1,000 at 17 TDs. Still not averaging a lot per carry. But he's still getting better. He's figuring it out. He's, yeah, he's still not that great, but he's he's figuring it out. He's getting better up to an 86 overall with that morale boost. Yeah, give me plus two break tackle. Give me some abilities. I like it. Oh my God. Joshua Winston nearly goes for 2K in his rookie year at 100 receptions, 17 touchdowns. What's his development trait? Yeah, star. I mean, it's not exactly shocking, but Wow. His speed didn't go up. Everything else did, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's sick. He's going to have superstar dev after this. 
100%. What do I upgrade for him? Probably, I want medium and short route running to go up. So, and I want ideally catching traffic. So slot's going to make the most sense for me. So hopefully get short route running and catching traffic. It's probably going to do like awareness and something. That's actually a pretty good upgrade. That's exactly what I was looking for. It doesn't always do that. Tyreek Hill was also great. Went for 1,100 yards at only five TDs though. Kyle Pitts played a role. Julius Newhouse was big in there. Calvin Ridley didn't do much, but Joshua Winston had a very, very good year. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Uh, oh my God. Miles Garrett, 29 sacks. Also had 15 for loss. Pretty good year. 15 for Grady Jarrett too. John Kaminsky with nine and a half. Six for Marlon Davidson. Not a whole lot of picks, but the two rookies get involved. Juan and Marion Milner, both with two. Yeah, also Joe Judge is a Cowboys coach now. Very interesting. But what a season. What a season. We'll take a first round bye. We'll take some upgrades. Kyle Pitts is killing it. I'm going to do... I'm going to do possession for him just because deep threats being upgraded by the CPU. So I'll just do that. Plus three run block. Okay. Up to a 65 with morale. AJ Terrell will do as well. And we'll do uh, probably zone for him just to get some more balance in there. The CPU is going to upgrade man coverage by themselves. So we'll get him up to an 85 overall. AJ Terrell looking pretty good now. Plus one zone coverage. Wow, dude. Don't upgrade too much at once. We don't want AJ Terrell being too good. Cardinals in the divisional. Also, I don't know why I thought of it just now, but Russell Gage, I'm targeting an offseason move for him. We'll see if we can advance to the conference championship. Our team's been rolling, and we roll right through Arizona. 45-24. And it's an interesting team we're facing. 91 offense, 83 defense for the Saints. Should I hop in here? Might as well. Down 7 0 early, but we answer right back and take the lead. Saints grab it right back, though. 17 14, 21 17. Saints take the lead. Been a lot of scoring in this first half. It's 24 24 now in the second half. And now teams have stopped. Saints take over. 31 24, 34 24. And we have a big field goal to keep the game alive. Defense was holding strong, and that might end up being the game right there. Yeah, it is. It is. 34-27. The Saints, unfortunately, knock us off. I mean, it was a really close game all the way. I mean, look at that scores by quarter. It was pretty crazy. Just we got outplayed in the second half, plain and simple. 2023 season recap. Saints won the Super Bowl. Cam Jordan won Super Bowl MVP. Christian McCaffrey with another MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Not like another in this rebuild, but if you've seen any other video on this channel, you know that will happen. Miles Garrett wins Defensive Player of the Year. Joshua Winston obviously wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Put up one of the best receiver seasons of all time. And then KJ Manning wins Defensive Rookie of the Year with the Broncos. You know, I'm curious where that season actually would rank all time. Receiving yards, it's number one. Knew he beat out Calvin Johnson. Most receiving yards ever in a season. And then receiving touchdowns, it's going to be tied for the bottom, right? Yeah, it doesn't even pop up, but I think he had 17. Joshua Winston, I mean, to the surprise of nobody, goes up to superstar development. Yeah, I mean, he won receiver of the year, offensive rookie of the year, led the league in receiving yards, obviously. And I think we're just going to do slot again. And the CPU will upgrade him in other areas. So we're going to go slot, slot. And I think we're going to be good to go. He goes up to an 87 overall. Pretty good. Medium route running there as well. So he's becoming a more complete player. But, I mean, how do you even... <laughs> how do you even live up to your first season? He's not going to do better than that. He's just not going to. Deion Jones is 29, but I certainly want to extend him. I'll franchise tag him if I have to. But he re-signs a massive extension to stay in Atlanta. Michael Walker... I don't know. I don't know about this one. He's definitely good. I don't know about that. I feel like we can do better than Michael Walker. You know what I'm saying? I think we're going to leave it. Antoine Winfield Jr. is in here. Oh, we're bringing Julio back. I mean, we can't. Never mind. Um, <laughs> it'd be nice to bring back Julio. Have him retire in Atlanta. Not for damn $14 million a year. 
Yeah, no shot. No shot on that one. Antoine Winfield Jr., though, would be very nice. Milner, by the way, only had star dev, and he stays at star dev. So that's a little bit disappointing. Noah Williams goes up to superstar. Again, not shocking. Well-deserved. Big offseason. Got Jack Fox. New starting punter. Nice. Michael Walker's back, but on a cheaper deal than he wanted. And we got Antoine Winfield Jr. Stealing him from Tampa Bay. Direct division rival. Think that's important. Think that's important. And yeah, it'd be cool to bring Julio back, but we have Tyreek Hill. We have little Julio now. That's what we're going to call Tyreek Hill. Little Julio. Um, but yeah, Antoine Winfield Jr. Just a big time upgrade on Richie Grant. Felt like that was a good move. Like, Richie Grant's good, but Antoine Winfield Jr. is just so much better. So going into the draft, what do we need? Also, both linemen, not shockingly, are star development. Pass blocking for DeAndre Sims, still a pretty big issue. The biggest surprising thing to me is Jermaine Fitzsimmons, who has star dev, right? Oh, okay. So he's he's playing with plus two morale. I thought I'm like, he's a 78 overall. I'm like, he went up seven overall points in one year still won a five i think he was a 71 overall when we drafted him right that's a that's a really big upgrade and not that he didn't have like the craziest year ever also again morale based but plus 10 overall what a year from joshua winston a lua coons had superstar kind of surprised Dion jones never went up not that we're at the end of the rebuild but we're kind of getting close it's nfl draft time I'm looking probably for a linebacker. Maybe the best edge rusher available. We haven't really invested in a second stud edge rusher. Like we have Miles Garrett, obviously amazing. John Kaminsky probably would work better as a backup. We could use a stud corner if there's a really good corner, but linebacker, edge rusher, corner. It's going to be a pick on defense. It's got to be. That's the one. Tyler Gaddis. That's the one. He's nuts. Stephen McCullough ran 4-2-4. What are we doing? Okay. That's the second fastest time of all time. I know what some of you guys are thinking. Bengal, which one are you going to pick? Which one are you going to pick? And some of you have been watching me for a long time. No, I'm going to get both of them. It's going to take a lot. But this is not a realistic rebuild. I'm going crazy. I'm getting both. Can't stop me. Actually, they definitely could if I can't trade for those picks. But, ooh, Tyrone Thorpe. Okay, Tyrone. Not bad value for the third round. Michael Walker's on the move. Trading number 16 and number 62 to move all the way up to number two overall. But I think we had to. I think we had to. The Giants are going to take whoever the Giants are going to take at number one. It's not going to be our guy. I promise you. Not that we can even tell. But it's not going to be the corner. Tyler Gaddis is still available. I didn't add him to my uh, draft board. I really thought he got taken. I'm like, what? But I can tell you that the Broncos would not have taken Brandon Quincy at number two. They wouldn't have. They probably would have gone Tyler Gaddis despite having like a billion corners that are sick. They were. They would have taken Tyler Gaddis. Steve McCullers, I didn't realize he's number four. Oh, you're kidding me. Dudley, Dudley Basley, by the way, is the most ridiculous name ever. Dude... If he didn't run 424, I could be like, okay, I, I don't need him, but he ran 424. Uh, I just have to have both. I have to have both. Oh, also, didn't expect that to go through. I would have offered less. I'm trading a first and a second next year to move up to number four. Again, the realism kind of going a little bit out the window here. <laughs> uh, but you know what? We're going all in, and sometimes you gotta. First up, Tyler Gaddis. 437 is pretty fast, by the way. And it's not even nearly as fast as 424. Tyler Gaddis is up first. He is an 81 overall. The number one overall player in the draft. Took him at number two. Star or better development. 95 speed, 83 man, 82 zone. Is fantastic. Also, tackles pretty well. Nice hit power. Good agility. Tyler Gaddis is awesome. The next corner... Because of his unreal speed and acceleration and probable agility, could be even better. Or at least the same overall. Like that's that's a potential thing that could be true. 
Stephen McCullers at number four. I'm doing it. 20-yard shuttle's real good. Real good. The three-cone, not amazing, so maybe the agility's not crazy. But Stephen McCullers looks unreal. We're taking him. He also is an 81 overall, the number two player in the class. Took him at number four. 97 speed. Pretty good. Pretty good. 82 man, 81 zone. Yeah, uh, he's a monster. He is a monster. Making a trade. Isaiah Oliver, Jalen Mayfield, and a third to move up to number 32. I'm getting a lot accomplished. The thing I think that makes me happiest about all this is how mad it will make the comments. Trading a 1, a 6, and a 4 to move up from 32 to 27. Trust me, it'll all make sense. And then trading number 27, Juan Pierce, who's one of the safeties we drafted last year that I just don't really see a role for him with normal dev long term on this team based on who we just drafted. Number 80 to move up to 13. The goal is to eventually take Dudley Bosley out of Washington. I just can't pass on that type of a name. The name value alone of Dudley Bosley is immense. Gotta make it happen. Really interesting trade. I know I'm going like ballistic right now. It is what it is. I'm trading number 30, a seventh round pick and a fourth next year to move down. I'm picking up number 41 and a third next year. Again, this will all make sense. And now finally trading number 13, a fifth and a sixth to move up to number nine. I'm wheeling and dealing a lot but this team is going to be unbelievable because of it. I'm going Dudley Basley out of Washington. 77 overall. We reached. I don't care. I saw A- minus finesse moves. I'm in. He's a 77 overall, which is crazy for the number 11 overall player in the class. Took him at number 9, obviously. Star or better development. 82 finesse moves to go with 87 speed and acceleration. Ooh, really, really good. Dudley Basley looks fantastic, to be honest. So we have really put our defense in a remarkable position to succeed with three top 10 picks. Shocking. And then in round two, I'm going to take Tyrone Thorpe out of Washington State, my Michael Walker replacement. Why do I think that Michael Walker went to Washington State? I think he actually went to Fresno State, but, you know, close enough. Yeah, Michael Walker's Fresno State. This is Washington State. Tyrone Thorpe is not like the youngest in the world. He's a late first round guy, but in a really talented class. That can be like a 73, 74 overall middle linebacker. Decent athlete, real strong, good top skills. Tyrone Thorpe is a 75 overall, actually. Number 21 in the class, took him at 41. The rub is he's only got normal development. Good speed, tackling, hit power, block shedding's nice, even if not good. Not much of a cover guy. He's decent. Like, he's slightly better than Michael Walker with his age factored in, but he's not amazing. I mean, I would be shocked if we don't come away with at least one superstar player out of those guys. This class was unbelievable. We got the two 80-plus overall players in the class. Casey Priestley at the top of the second, 79 overall safety. Looks really solid. But it's a complete secondary for the four highest overall players in the class. Finally an offensive player after the D-tackle. But this class was definitely really, really good. I mean, there's another really high overall corner. Normal dev, sucks to suck. So Milner, of course, moving back to safety. McCullers is an 82 overall safety. Well, really 81, I guess, with morale. Certainly not going to play him there. We're just going to have sick corners. Sick corners. I like how it doesn't know what to do with Miles Garrett. They're going to play him at backup D-tackle. What do you... Uh, why, why would that be? What would happen? There you go. But Basley's going to play over Kaminsky. It's, you know, it's pretty obvious. Basley's the same overall. He's 22 compared to Kaminsky's 28. They probably have the same development trait, but maybe not. And then who do I want? Gaddis or McCullers playing more? This is the 95 speed player. McCullers has 97 speed. I guess it really doesn't matter too much. Aaron Rodgers still sitting here, as is Tony Pollard. Well, Tony Pollard, welcome back. You can be a backup running back again. We're also going to bring back Gronk. And I think we need a punter as well. Do we need a punter? I think we're going to bring Jake Bailey back. So this team is looking really, really good. With the fantasy style rebuilds, I can really go all out and just build a juggernaut 
and that's usually the goal. And the realistic rebuilds were, you know, being a little bit more realistic, obviously. And I know that takes, you know, the fun out of it for some guys. Either way, honestly, some people don't like the realistic rebuilds. Some people like the craziness and just building a God squad. You know, some people like it the other way. So can't please everybody. That's why I do both. I'm trying to please everybody. I'm leaving Winston in the slot. I want him to get Superstar X Factor, so slot receiver it is. You guys have seen the team. The team is really, really good. This is probably the second to last season, just because I really want to see those corners develop. I mean, that's the biggest thing. So the video will be a little bit longer, but we can see those corners end up being unreal in year two. Five and two at the midseason mark. Not quite as good as we were last season at all, but still not bad. Who's going to be a free agent? Kyle Pitts, ooh, Richie Grant, John Kaminsky. Can't bring back either of them. I mean, well, I'm sure we can. It's not really not really necessary. Richie Grant, we just have other guys. We have the money for it, though. Like, Kyle Pitts is going to be expensive, but not, not all that expensive. So, Kyle Pitts, 23 years old, signing a big contract extension. He's ridiculous. And I guess we could bring back Richie Grant and just have good depth. He's pretty cheap. So whether he's going to want to sign this or not, we'll see. Wants more money. Kaminsky's going to want a pretty big contract. I could probably do two years. Just have him hanging around. He's been good for us, so we'll keep him around. And then Richie Grant. Again, I like him in real life, but in this rebuild, it just didn't really work out for him. Let's see our rookie dev traits. I need to see some superstars. I need to see some superstars. Okay. Okay. So Basley's star... Gaddis is star. McCullers is superstar X Factor. All right. <laughs> Pretty good. Obviously, would have liked to see, you know, uh, another one be superstar or higher. I'll take two stars, though. Still pretty awesome. The thing that's interesting, let me know in the comments would you guys rather have two superstars and a star or a superstar X Factor and two stars the way we got? I don't know. I think I'd probably want two superstars, maybe. I don't know. It's, in it's an interesting thought. Let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments section below as we will simulate two of the playoffs. Should be should be taking part in them. 12-5. and five, Very good season. Very good season. We're up to a 91 overall. And the stats are as follows. Ooh, Patrick Mahomes actually outperformed Noah Williams. Kyle Trask had a heck of a year as well. Noah Williams threw for over 5,100 yards and 40 touchdowns. Only seven interceptions. Very good year. Julius Newhouse had a great season. Great season. 1,100, nearly 1,200 yards. But the big thing is about four and a half yards per carry. 17 touchdowns for him. Receiving. Yeah, Joshua Winston was never going to be able to do what he did last year again. But 1,200 yards and eight TDs is still really solid. A lot of distribution going on. Tyreek Hill had 1,100 yards, 8 TDs. Very similar numbers to Winston. Kyle Pitts over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. Really good season for him as well. He's a 99 overall. <laughs> He's so good. Julius Newhouse had 900 receiving yards, 7 touchdowns. Calvin Ridley is like not even featuring anymore, and he's a superstar X-Factor receiver. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. Defensively, we got Deion Jones, who had 147 tackles, eight for loss, and four picks. Miles Garrett put up 23 and a half sacks, 14 for the rookie Dudley Basley. He might go up to superstar dev after that. It's a really good rookie year. What's the rookie record for sacks in a season? Javon Curse in 1999, 14 and a half. Dudley Basley, half a sack shy, seven for Grady Jarrett, five and a half for Marlon Davidson, and even five for Kaminsky as well. Or no, Fuyasadi Aluakun. I don't know why I thought it'd be John Kaminsky there. He had one. Interceptions, six for Tyler Gaddis. That might have led the league. He might go up to superstar with his 94-man coverage as a rookie. Oh my goodness. Made the Pro Bowl. It's pretty solid. Four for Deion Jones, two for Terrell. Aluakun had one. And Stephen McCuller, superstar X-Factor, only had one. Just the way she goes sometimes. They gave him bottleneck. Mm. I mean, that's cool. But I think universal coverage. Let's give him Zonehawk. And why do I give zone abilities 
to man coverage players? It's a good question. We're in the wild card here. Not going to answer it as we advance to the divisional. Hopefully, we do. Twenty-four to ten. Seahawks in the divisional now. It's unfortunate we didn't get the first round by. I got to play an extra game and risk losing again, of course. But we don't. Thirty-one twenty-eight, and once again in the conference championship, back-to-back -back years now. Going to try and knock off the Packers. Certainly a really good team, but we are significantly better. So let's see if we can get it done. Down 7-0. We're going to answer with a field goal, though, and now take the lead 10-7. Come on, Falcons. Let's make the comeback. It's a really small one. We better hold on, though. 17, now 20-10. 23-10 in the fourth quarter. Defense got to hold strong. We got the ball. We score 26-10. That's the game. Matt LaFleur and the Packers cannot believe it, but I can because I can believe in this team. I can believe in this team. They got it done. You love to see it. I'd say Marion Milner probably has the most impactful upgrade here. We need to get his zone coverage up. His man coverage is so high. Let's get your zone coverage up. It's the 9-8 and eight Steelers in the Super Bowl. It just ain't right. It just ain't right. Noah Williams, show me superstar X Factor, please. Survey says yes. His deep accuracy is abysmal. Even though he's got bazooka. We're going to do strong arm. I need to get that deep accuracy up. That's really holding them back. Plus three into the 80s at least finally. They were just only updating or upgrading Scrambler. And we're going to do zone coverage for Tyler Gaddis. Who somehow with star development is just outplaying my... Only plus one zone coverage. Is outplaying my... Superstar X Factor. One DB of the year and didn't go up to Superstar. That's crazy. Dudley Basley, did you go up to Superstar? He didn't either. Oh, come on now. Come on now. He's going to go up to near 90 finesse moves, I think. Something like that. 88. 88. Super Bowl time. Falcons. Steelers. They're actually not bad. They're an 85 overall. That's super cool. J.J. Watt and T.J. Watt have teamed up and they made it to the Super Bowl. That is awesome. No scoring so far in the first quarter. Steelers finally break it with a field goal and then a touchdown. They're up 10-0. Our offense has not showed up. We finally get a field goal ending the second half and we're going to tie things up at 10 here in the third quarter. This Falcons offense needs to step up. You can't kill us in the Super Bowl again. 24-17. Make it 27-17. And the Atlanta Falcons have redeemed themselves. It isn't against the Patriots. It isn't coming back from down 28-3. to But we got the lead. We held it when it mattered most. Slow start, but a big-time finish. The Atlanta Falcons, for the first time in franchise history, will hoist the Lombardi Trophy. They thought they were going to do it years ago. I got to bring up the 28-3. You know I got to. I'm sorry, Atlanta. I'm sorry. You know what it is, though. But this is, this is why we play the game. This is what we play for. Winning it all and doing so without Justin Fields, with Kyle Pitts, with whoever this cracker-ass quarterback looked like. He really is one of the whitest-looking fellers i ever seen. And that's, that's take that from me. I'm a honky-looking ass, ain't I? But 27-17, we're going to take the lead, and we're going to do a final season. Try to repeat. Zeke won MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. Miles Garrett won Defensive Player of the Year, and Dudley Basley won Defensive Rookie of the Year. Vikings had the Offensive Rookie of the Year with Johnny Brewer, and Urban Meyer notches another Coach of the Year. I wonder how good his playbooks are. Not that we're struggling there. Like, our offense was great. Our defense was really, really good as well. But how does Urban Meyer keep winning all these big-time awards? They went 11-6. and six. Their offense was unspectacular, and their defense was great. Maybe something to think about. Oh, is Miles Garrett regressing? That's cute. Lost one speed and awareness. <laughs> and we can upgrade speed rusher again. Miles Garrett's just too good. It's pretty much what it comes down to. We're not going to be able to upgrade him after this. We're just not. They're going to say, oh, I'm sorry about that. Yep. Two skill points just evaporated. And Jermaine Fitzsimmons. Why does he have something? I don't know. Just, just earned it. We'll do... I mean, I'm liking what's going on. We'll just do power. Keep him in the scheme fit up to an 85 overall with morale. Certainly not quite that high, but he's looking good. Damn, we lost Gronk. Oh, okay, unbelievable, by the way. Gronk, big part of that team that beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. 
He's no James White or Julian Edelman, but he, he was there. And uh, he joins the Falcons and wins a Super Bowl with them. Also, yeah, I knew I misremembered it. I just looked it up because I, I had a feeling, yeah, that was the year Gronk was hurt. So he actually didn't even play in the Super Bowl on his Jeremy Shockey type beat. But players to resign, I'm probably going to let Richie Grant go. I mean, there's no reason to. It's not like we need the money. So Richie Grant, welcome back. Do we need anything in free agency? I don't think so. I like my offensive line. I mean, the morale is boosted. We could use a backup tight end. I'm keeping Tony Pollard around. Receivers are great. And then defensively, we could maybe use a linebacker. Would have been really nice to see Tyrone Thorpe get upgraded to star dev. Didn't end up happening. A Luakun reg uh, regressed quite a bit. We could use, if there's a stud D tackle or a stud linebacker, that's about it. I don't want to touch the secondary and then tight end. All right, we got Janu Smith. Pretty good backup tight end. We're going to go to the draft. Don't really have much in the way of picks because we just, you know, went all in on trying to win the Super Bowl. Guess what? We did. It paid off. All right, third round. What's a team who doesn't have a first or second actively? The Texans, I think, were in that spot. The 49ers, maybe, too? Let's see what the best player we can take here. Time's ticking. I'm a look. It's going to be Deontay Brennan. Fits a scheme. We're bringing him home to Georgia. Georgia Bulldog, now going to play for the Atlanta Falcons. Has star or better development as well. So good on Deontay Brennan. He's a, he's a run stopper. That's for sure. Another pick at the end of the third round. It's going to be another end. They were two that was that were close. I took the better one, but I think we're going to end up with both of them since he was on my draft board. But that is going to be the draft. I'm not going to do it. Who are some of the players we missed out on? Dude, I feel like every time I go all out, I just don't really miss out on much. Like there was a really good linebacker, only normal dev. Fine with what we have. Shaquille Donnell, normal dev as well. Quan Moreland. Yeah, he's a pretty solid player, but I'm really happy with what we had. If I was going to miss any draft over these four or five seasons, I'm not mad that it was that one. This is how the team will look for the final season. It looks awesome. I mean, we have three X-Factors, four X-Factors actually on, on offense here. Let me get Calvin Ridley's turned off. Let me get Noah Williams turned on. Wait, well, we're going to use his X-Factor abilities. Maybe a better way of saying that. And then defensively, I think we're just in a good spot. Team looks really, really good. AJ Terrell is going to be the third corner just because these guys are younger. So higher ceiling could get better right away. McCullers in the nickel. Tyreek Hill in the slot. And Newhouse, of course, our main running back. Garrett, Jarrett, Basley, Kaminsky. And then, you know, the same guys you're used to seeing. I'm not going to simulate to the midseason mark because we already know we're not re-signing anybody. It's the final season. It's going to be playoff time. This team better make the playoffs. Another 14-3 and three season, although this one was maybe our best yet. Number three offense, number one defense. Our rushing defense was phenomenal, even if we didn't answer that on the other side of the ball with a good rushing attack. Doesn't matter. Man, Mahomes was unreal again. But so is our quarterback, Noah Williams. About 5,300 yards, 42 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, rushing. Julius Newhouse was good again, about 1,300 yards, 13 TDs, 4.3 per carry. Tyreek Hill, 1,600 yards, 20 touchdowns on 94 catches. Calvin Ridley had another pretty good year, 954 yards, 8 TDs. Kyle Pitts under 1,000 because Tyreek Hill had all of the yards, 6 TDs. Newhouse was good. Winston slowed down a bit. He just wasn't in that prominent slot role. He's up to 99 speed, by the way. Do I have two 99 speed players? Hill might be slightly lower because he's regressing now that he's into his 30s, but you know, very good. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a lot of speed. Like the fastest tight end in the league, the two fastest receivers, Deion Jones, 113 tackles, eight for loss. Miles Garrett had 24 for loss, 23 for Grady Jarrett, 19 for Dudley Basley. And look at this sack tandem. 19 for Miles Garrett, 17 and a half for Dudley Basley. Dudley Basley. 
I mean, when you talk about a sack duo, I mean, that's testes one and two, or testicle one and two in the scrotum right there at left end and right end. Six for Grady Jarrett, interception. Six for A.J. Terrell at CB3. Three for Marion Milner, three for Deion Jones, three for Stephen McCullers. Even Antoine Winfield Jr. managed to snag one, although you'd expect more. Tyler Gaddis goes from six last year to zero this year, even though he goes up to a 90 overall now with morale as his zone gets boosted up by one. Speed goes up by one. 96 speed for, what's his name? Tyler Gaddis. Wild card round of the playoffs is over divisional now for my 93 overall team, 95 offense, 91 defense. Hopefully we don't get first round elim. That'd be kind of a sad way to end the video, but we don't. We went 28 to 13, not 28 to three. Don't confuse those two. Falcons Lions, man. I mean, this shouldn't be close. It's a 93 overall team versus an 84. I know games aren't one on paper, but they should be. We better beat this team. Oh my God, we lost. Oh my goodness. The Steelers make back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I mean, you got to be joking, dude. This has to be some cruel joke. 38-27. We got beat by the Lions. That's actually unbelievable. Pretty sick. Pretty sick way to end the video. Oh, that's crazy. That is crazy. But this is the final team. Really, really good team, clearly. And Basley goes up to Superstar Dev. Not exactly surprising at all. He's been amazing. So, you know, shout out to him for being great. Being a great player. Steven McCullers in year two is a 95 overall. I know morale's boosting it up slightly, but man, 98 speed, 97 man coverage. Good luck. And the Lions won the Super Bowl. Good for them. Good for them. I'm doing one more season. 96 overall, Julius Newhouse is back. I'm franchise tagging Noah Williams. We're balling out. Final season. Let's get it. Is there anything I need in the draft? Like, not really. <laughs> Again, maybe a good linebacker, maybe a good D-tackle. But we're set. I'm going to go Andrew Werner. Looks like a D-tackle to me in my scheme. And he's a 74 overall with normal development. Not the best at the end of the first round. Late first rounder Delvin Caver, outside linebacker to San Diego State, is a 74 overall with star or better development. Not the best athlete in the world, can't cover anybody. These outside linebackers who can actually stop the run never can. They're always terrible. But can I convince myself to start him? He's probably got star dev. He's like minus four or five overall that we have currently there. I don't know if that's a good idea. 281 overall players, one's a corner. Really solid. And Zion Foster. A running back to the Dolph Dolphins. Huh? The Vikings. Where did I get Dolphins from? Why did I say that? I have no idea. Chad Hawkinson. I mean, he was a 73 overall draft pick. Set, playing up to a 75 overall? He's starting over Jake Matthews. I don't care. He's only 23. Matthews is what? 33 at this point? 34 for Jake Matthews. We're going with the young gun. And then defensively, yeah, whatever. I'll start Caver at left outside linebacker. Try and stop me. Try and stop me. Playoff time. We should be a playoff team. I would be shocked if we were not. 13-4. and four. After franchise tagging our quarterback, you can see our salary cap situation is not the best. But I got around it. Got the Packers in the divisional. Truly the final year here. 97 offense, 91 defense for a 94 overall. Let me see some, let me see superstar Dev at left tackle. Let me see that. Nope, star, but he's already better than Jake Matthews. Made the right decision there. And then defensively, he's got star. Is that the right decision to start him? You know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Pretty good year for Noah Williams, by the way. About 5,200 yards, 46 TDs to 12 picks. Julius Newhouse, his best year, almost five yards per carry, 18 TDs, 1,300 yards. Joshua Winston, back to being a beast. 1,400 yards, 18 TDs. Tyreek Hill, 14 touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. 
Kyle Pitts at almost 1,004 touchdowns for him as well. Calvin Ridley participating. Definitely participating. 14 tackles for loss for Miles Garrett led the team, tied with Marlon Davidson. He also had 21 sacks, 17 again for Dudley Basley, and then two picks for a handful of players there. Nothing special. And we'll see if we can beat the Packers in the divisional. We're moving quickly here. If we lose, we lose. And we lost 34-27. Gosh, why'd you have to lose? Why'd you have to lose with a 94 overall team? This is the final team, though. 97 offense, 94 defense, 94 overall. This team was sick. Winston got up to superstar X-Factor. Joshua Winston. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this team is one of the best I've built for sure. I kind of went balls to the wall to do it, but we made it happen. For your side, Iluakun's up to Superstar X Factor. Not that it really matters. He's regressing a ton. He's 32. And the D-line's pretty good. I mean, Dudley Basley 100% has the most sacks through her first three seasons. Has to. 14, 17, a half, and 17. There's no way anyone has more than that. So... I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Maybe J.J. Watt. Nope. J.J. Watt had 36 and a half through his first three seasons. It wasn't until 2014 and year four where he had another 20 sack season. But uh, yeah, the first season, rookie season, five and a half. But his three year stretch as a second, third, and fourth year player with 20 and a half, 10 and a half, and then 20 and a half again, pretty good. That's going to do it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed one way or another. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Make sure to use code BANGLE on SeatGeek. Save yourself $20 when you buy tickets for anything. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defensive joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.